What's up, Battlefielders? This is Aaron Sampson. And Ryan Schubert. And today we are going to give you some tips and tricks on how to defend yourself against those unstoppable helicopter crews. Because the Stinger is dead. Yeah, not, not seeing a lot of people bringing the Stingers to the fight anymore. I only had any luck with it against really, really bad pilots. And those pilots are a danger to themselves anyway. Correct. So we're going to use Gulf of Oman to show you what we feel are some of the best strategies against powerful helicopter crews. Some of the things we're going to cover today are what to do if you're by yourself, how to buddy up and use a Soflam and a Javelin, getting in a tank with a CITV station and guided shells, and also maybe uh, get you to the point where you might be that pilot. Yes, one of the best solutions is becoming the enemy. So starting off, if you find yourself alone on the field without a buddy, we've noticed that the 50 caliber weapon on top of um, vehicles is extremely effective. Yeah, I like the 50 cal. You know, if you don't actually, you know, you don't, you won't often take out a helicopter, but you will often do enough damage to it that, you know, you're you help your team quite a bit. Like right here, where we get a, a kill assist. Especially if there's more than one of you hopping up on those mounted machine guns at a time. Yeah, it's definitely, you know, it's it's maybe nickel and diming, but it's it's actually very helpful. Now, this is effective because the mounted machine guns have a very fast round, and that lets you lead your targets and um, land consistent shots on them. Yeah, if you get used to it, it's actually pretty easy to, to land regular hits. You can put a whole drum in, in an enemy vehicle if you want. Also, if they land a repair, you can chase them down, in which case you can land the coup de gras with... An RPG. Now the first step in the Soflam Javelin combination is to kill yourself. Yeah, suicide is involved and sometimes you need to do that to win. So the first technique we're using here to get to higher ground is the spawn beacon parachute technique. Now that the Mav is dead, this is total legit. Now that the Mav is dead, the only way snipers can really get to inaccessible places is uh, to spawn on, the, on their beacon and parachute in. It's important to note that the spawn will have you facing north every time. Yes, you always parachute north. That is very important to note. So place your spawn beacon south, approximately 60 meters for a three to five story building, and right at the base of a skyscraper to get to the top of those structures. Yes, the construction site on Oman or the tower on Karg Island are good examples of where you want that right at the base. Now the reason that we're doing this is because the Soflam needs to be in a place where it's unreachable by other soldiers. It's protected, probably has a minimal backstop, so splash damage won't hurt it. Yes, it's so easy to spot that you need to put it in a, basically the best sheltered space you can and still have the most visibility. Also, the Soflam has issues with target acquisition, so you want to put it in a place where it cannot see multiple targets because you will often find it targeting a jeep when there's a deadly helicopter also within its view. Yeah, it'll target a jeep, it'll target another Soflam instead of the helicopter. Now one of the great things about this technique is even if you're not effective with the Javelin, the helicopter and jet pilots are going to be hearing that annoying tone the entire time they're flying and often make stupid mistakes, such as this pilot here. Yes, we found that the distraction quality of the tone is even worth it whether or not you're landing your hits. Also, the javelins persist for a lengthy period of time, are highly maneuverable, and seem to relock sometimes, even when lock is broken. Yeah, they'll they'll catch the lock after the the Soflim gets it back, as long as they haven't detonated. Now, the downside is that the javelin is too slow to take out jets, and you have a limited amount of ammo. Correct. If you can, if you have more players in your squad, you can get somebody to lay down an ammo crate, or like we did with excessive suicides, lay down an ammo crate and come back with the javelin. Hey, it's a high ticket match. Don't judge. This can also be used on the defensive side of a rush match, where your deaths don't count. Yeah, in in high ticket matches in rush, uh, your kill death ratio shouldn't matter to you as much. So at the end of our Soflam javelin session, we concluded that this is about as effective as the old Stinger used to be. I would say slightly more effective because you can engage ground targets you can engage ground targets uh, which the javelin actually does more damage to so you have a bit of versatility Okay, so moving on, the second thing that we tried, which ended up being actually one of the most effective things, was uh, to hop in a tank with a buddy and use a CITV station, which is the last unlock in the tank, and uh, guided shells. Yeah, I liked this a lot too. This was, 
you know, for the more open open terrain areas, um, like you see here on Gulf of Oman over by Olive Fort, uh, there's not a lot of cover, and having an armored vehicle is good for you. Um, in addition, you have a long field of view to see the enemy coming in, and it's easy for the station operator to lock on, and you got plenty of time to get that shell off. Also, the uh, tank projectile is much faster than the javelin, and therefore is capable of killing jets and helicopters uh, f uh, very effectively. Yes. And uh, what I think actually worked a little bit for us, too, was if we had an engineer carrying a javelin and a sniper with a soflam in the tank, uh, we were able to switch between the two if necessary. Now, the downsides to this setup are that the gun barrel has a limited elevation. Yeah, you really have to try to find an incline to uh, post up on. And again, in, in, the, in this particular situation on, on Oman, the, the sort of rolling beachfront at Olive Fort was, was quite ideal and would be good uh, regardless of which side you were fighting from. Now, pros to this technique are you even have alternate fire solutions. So if a helicopter gets in too close to you, you can destroy them with one hit with the main gun on the tank. Absolutely. And also the person in the CITV station can hop back up to the mounted machine gun and also lay fire into the helicopter. So overall, we found this to be the most effective ground strategy. Yeah, I think we had a pretty good run on that the other day. And our final solution for people is be that pilot. <laughs> yep, just get better at flying. Um, the bottom line is people may complain that you're not a good jet pilot when you're learning, but hey, everybody has to learn. So, you know, yes. screw them. Just, just learn how to be a good pilot. Now, starting off, if there's a helicopter that is completely destroying your team, you can just start off by ramming them. That, yep. you, can, you can do the old ramming technique. It does tend to throw them off balance and make them crash, though. Yes. Which you'll see here in a second when we were hit by a jet. Yeah, here we are, so and unexpectedly rammed by a jet. And there it is, the tilt. There goes the jet. And there goes the helicopter. Once you get a little bit better, you can start pulling maneuvers like this, where <laughs> you kill people at point-blank range with a jet. Yeah, that, I don't know if that was in a... That was a an elite maneuver there. <laughs> so, Ryan, why don't you tell me about the feathering technique for firing air-to-air -air missiles? Uh, the good thing about the heat seekers, which are an early unlock, is that uh, you don't have to fire both missiles at once. You can stagger them. So you can fire one, let the enemy pop flares, and then fire the second one and catch them in the tail. And then you probably have to go to guns to finish them off. Yeah, you got to go to the guns then, but they should be pretty well damaged. It shouldn't take too much. Now, here's us in a helicopter. Um, helicopter versus helicopter is also a total legit strategy, although you will need a gunner to be effective. Um, but the biggest mistake that we see... Oop, coming, coming in for the pickup. <laughs> but the biggest mistake that we see helicopter pilots make, especially new helicopter pilots, besides crashing, is uh, not using cover. Yeah, definitely... Uh you know, especially with a, a map like Oman where there's a lot of buildings, you want to use those buildings as cover to break locks, to evade the enemy. Think of yourself the same way you think of yourself as a soldier. You wouldn't stand out in the open with nowhere to get to and, and let people shoot at you. So st if you're in a helicopter, stay near the buildings, and when you start getting locked up, duck behind the buildings. Here comes another jet that tried to ram us and, oh, <laughs> rammed a building. <laughs> Don't think he saw that building there. Uh, also, here, this is a dive technique where if you're getting locked, just basically dive straight at the ground, pop your flares, get behind a building to break that lock. If they continue to lock you up, get behind another building. And you definitely want to do that quickly because rockets will follow you around the corner. And uh, jets are less maneuverable, so they're going to have a hard time following you through these maneuvers. And here you will see us being that helicopter pilot. Yeah, we went on a good little run here. Definitely causing some mayhem. So I think in conclusion, what we found out was nothing really beats two-man tactics. Yes, it just goes back to the idea behind the Battlefield franchise, that teamwork is paramount. So in order to beat a professional two-man helicopter team, you really are going to need two other people working together. Most definitely, or else you're better off staying as far away as possible. Or, you know, just get up on that 50 and keep whittling them down. So that's it today. We covered some strategies you can use against advanced helicopter pilots. 
First thing we did was uh, so flame and Javelin, then Tank plus CITV Station, the most effective that we found. And then um, just, just practicing as a pilot yourself. And you, when all else fails, just ram the helicopter. Mm -hmm. And to finish off, we will show you the ultimate sniper insult. Sneak up on him, shoot him, and then stab him. As always, thanks for watching. Have fun out there on the battlefield.